Hello everybody, welcome back to Nerd in Texoma. Uh, as a quick, I guess, follow-up to uh, the Magnolia Fest video that I had uploaded, uh, I am showing off that good old Transformer knockoff that I found at the Magnolia Fest. Now, I've already taken it out of the package and played with it. Ooh, that's what you're supposed to do with Transformers. I mean, some of them, yes, I keep in the package because of uh, sentimental reasons. Uh, some of them, I think the package just looks cool, so I play with them and then put them back in the package and stuff like that. Um, this one I bought just because I thought it was cool. I have the original in storage. Yes, everything's in storage. And this was a uh, downscaled version of that original. And like I said, I've been looking for it for a couple years, see if I could find it just in the wild. It wasn't one of those that, oh, I have to have it, so I'm going to buy it off eBay, you know, and all that. It's a, I want it. If I find it, I'm going to get it. But... I don't have to have it, so I'm not going to buy it from eBay or AliExpress or something like that. So yes, this is the latest series, Deformation Robot number 5, Tank Megatron. This is from uh, the Combiner Wars series about, I think, 10 years ago or so. Uh, this is the... Tank Megatron that they did. And like I say, this is a uh, shrunk down size. I won't even say the original was what they call the Leader class, and this is a Voyager class size. They they change the names on the size designations of the figures often. Uh, but yeah, here's the box. I mean, it's a pretty quality sturdy box. I mean you can see they've got some uh, nice background detailing and stuff. They changed the logo. It's that weird thing and instead of a standard Autobot or Decepticon logo because that's one of those things I've never quite understood. Uh, these knockoff manufacturers are in most times, in most cases, directly copying a figure. If it's upsize or downsize, they're still copying the look and the feel and the transformation of the figure, but they're scared to use the legit Autobot or Decepticon logos. They'll make up a fake one. I don't quite get that. But uh, here on the side, you see him in robot mode with the deformation robot. Again, the font is the same as official Transformer fonts have used in the past, but, you know, I don't know. <laughs> Goes in all that copyright stuff, the legality stuff. I don't know about all that. I just think, you know, I get stuff because I think it's cool. But as you can see on his chest piece there, they've gone with this new funky logo. It's pretty nicely detailed. On that side of the box you have the latest series. Ooh. And on the back you have the product pictures of robot mode and tank mode with all of your transformation instructions printed on the box. And like I say, I've already taken him out of the package, you can see. Uh, when he comes in the package, he's in robot mode, but here I have him in his tank mode. Which, I mean, is pretty nicely detailed. You've got, you know, different paint apps all over the place. You know, nothing too flashy, because, you know, a tank shouldn't be 
flashy a tank should be as stealthy as it can be to sneak up on the enemy and fire on them. And I'm wanting to say there is some simplification to the mold. It's been a while since I've seen my original, but I think there was a flap that goes here to kind of cover up visible head mode in tank there. But overall, it's a pretty nice feel. It doesn't feel completely cheap. So it's got nice molded details. It's got that funky logo right there. It's got your two weapons here that you can actually merge them together and make another gun. Now this is one of the things that I think is kind of cheapened. Is these flaps here cover up the fists. And in robot mode they have a tendency to kind of flop around a little bit. And they don't stay in place as well as the original did. So, eh. Again, it's a knockoff. It was 14 bucks. I think it's cool. You know, it's got nice details. I'm sure there's some, that's the uh, combined mode for that one gun. There's tank mode, obviously, without it. You know, for the 14 bucks, yeah. You know, like I said, it's got that floppiness on those panels sometimes, but I think it's a pretty decent representation of the figure at a different size at a different price point. So uh, give me a moment and I will be right back with Tank Megatron in his robot mode. Alright everybody, I am back and we have this Tank Megatron in his robot mode now. And again, the detailing, the paint applications are very, very nice on here. Uh, I'm not sure if y'all can actually see that too well, but his eyes have a good amount of light piping there. You can see on the back of the head is completely that clear blue to if you have a good enough light source at the back of his head is eyes would glow blue, which is actually kind of weird because most of the time in the Transformers series, at least in the original series, uh, the Autobots, the good guys, were the ones that had blue eyes, and the Decepticons, who were the bad guys, had red eyes or yellow eyes. So for Megatron to have blue eyes, it's kind of kind of funky, but kind of cool. But like I say, you can see a lot of the detail on his face there. It's very nice. There's the detail on his chest, on his abs there. This is a very good representation of Megatron. Now, in Generation 1, Megatron was a gun, so he transformed into a robot that looked like this, and I believe this is the first time that they were trying to go for a more G1-y look on an updated form of Megatron. And as you can see, I think they pulled it off pretty well, pretty decently. Uh, into my critiques, uh, my shortcomings I have with this figure. If you look closely on the legs there, it looks like they're kind of pointed inward and there's no way to really get them back out, you know, to look straighter, but eh, 
that's a minor issue. Uh, remember those covers in uh, tank mode that I was talking about being kind of floppy? This one, especially here where you attach his cannon, it gets really floppy. And at times, you can see how it kind of goes out there and it'll kind of flop down and cover his hand a little bit. Whereas the other one, it locks into place a lot better. Now I know y'all will say that, oh well that's because he's got the big old cannon pegged in here. No. That doesn't really have anything to do with it. That connection joint there is just extremely loose. Uh, the other thing that I have a concern with, or not really a concern, but a complaint with, is on the back, his little backpack, it's really supposed to be transformed like that, but sometimes it gets a little loose and it'll have one kind of angle up like that. The way I've found that keeps them nice and tight so they don't flop around in robot mode is to have it transformed out more like I guess wings but again I mean all the detailing on this figure for being a undersized knockoff is very very cool again he has that funky weird I don't know what the heck that's supposed to be logo <laughs> rather than his Decepticon logo uh, the purple right there on his chest doesn't exactly fill in the whole area. At the edges it gets a little fuzzy. Eh, it's not that bad of a issue in my opinion. I mean, it transforms exactly the same as the original Megatron did. Or not the original original, the original of this version you know so all in all I think it's a pretty decent cool toy you know if you find it for 15 bucks or lower definitely grab a hold of it if you're a transformer fan or you know if you're getting it for your kids grandkids whatever uh, I think I've seen them on eBay for like 20, 25 bucks. That's why I was kind of like, yeah, I think I'll pass on that. You know, because for 25 bucks, I don't think it's really that great of a figure. For 15, yeah, get it. But, uh, like I said, this is my good old Magnolia Fest knockoff Megatron. So, hope you all have enjoyed the video, and I'll see you all next time. Bye.